To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words, guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Good morning to you all. Right, today we celebrate three sisters, saints who are religious. This is a religious place here, and I consider that you also have that kind of religious feeling that you come here to put everything aside and bring God closer into your lives. Like these three ladies, Ethelburga, Hildedite, and Kutburga. They also have connections with uh, this area as well, as the prayers, in fact, indicate. So let us offer this Mass today for your personal intention, feeling that uh, you wish to ask God for yourselves to support your religious way of doing things, and perhaps even others in your homes around you that you wish that they will improve and get closer to the Lord. For us, let us start by preparing ourselves to celebrate mysteries, asking the Lord to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my heart, through my heart, through my words, through this book. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, through the ministry of your servants, Ethelburga, Hildetite, and Kadburga, you established the abbey at, pa at Barking in this area as a school of living prayer and a beacon of Christian witness. As you bestowed upon your saints the gifts of holiness, wisdom, and companionship, so grant us to follow in their footsteps these same gifts in the same full measure as we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. If you are led by the Spirit, no law can touch you. When self-indulgence is at work, the results are obvious. Fornication, gross indecency, and sexual irresponsibility, idolatry and sorcery, feuds and wrangling, jealousy, bad temper and quarrels, disagreements, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and similar things. I warn you now, as I warned you before, those who behave like this will not inherit 
the kingdom of God. What the Spirit brings is very different. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There can be no law against things like that, of course. You cannot belong to Christ Jesus unless you crucify all self-indulgent passions and desires. Since the Spirit is our life, let us be directed by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anyone who follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. Follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they like winnowed chaff shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Instruct me, Lord, in your way, on an even path lead me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said to the Pharisees, Alas for you, Pharisees, you who pay your tithe of mint and rue and all sorts of garden herbs and overlook justice and the love of God, these you should have practiced without leaving the others undone. Alas for you, Pharisees, who like taking the seat of honor in the synagogues and being greeted obsequiously in the market squares. Alas for you, because you are like the unmarked tombs that men walk on without knowing it. A lawyer then spoke up, Master, he said, when you speak like this, you insult us too. Alas for you lawyers also, he replied, because you load on men burdens that are un unendurable, burdens that you yourselves do not move a finger to lift. The Gospel of the Lord. I had two interesting readings today, which um, I listened and um, I appreciated. Um, all that um, is, in fact, opened before us to ponder on and also to reflect that many things around us are a hindrance to really keeping strong and get closer to our Lord. Instead of having the right virtues, we often end up in things that are really not close to God. I'll just go through just 
to mention because I, I was interested listening to the first reading, St. Paul to the Galatians. It's a responsibility, he called it, but how it's through the acts, negative acts in our lives. Idolatry, sorcery, feuds and wrongling and jealousy, bad temper, quarrels, disagreements, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and similar things. How does this take us? As criticism, St. Paul contended with people where he himself, first of all, was um, the one who did the wrong thing, but then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He fell off the horse, the, of the horse, and then he heard this voice saying, go and clean yourself. Clean yourself, of course, because he was injured at the falling from the horse. But that clean yourself meant, meant something else. Jesus spoke to him and he was converted. And we know now who St. Paul, Paul is. He is the one who brought faith like all the other apostles who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there is conversion, which is possible. A simple reflection for each one of us, without going into much length, is just to make sure that we understand the readings and we try and absorb the mission the words, the lesson that is offered to us. If there are things that you are doing wrong, be converted. Change your habits. Get closer to the Lord and make sure that you change your life. Otherwise, you're going to be the subject of not help, but destruction. You destroy yourself by the way you commit worldly sins. Just a few words that I would very much like to expand on this, but time is short. The Mass itself is going to be a lift for us, for our souls, to convert us and get us closer to Jesus Christ, who very much is going to be coming to us, to each one of us, when we approach the altar to receive Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Let's not do this as a habit, but we do it as if we are being converted every day for anything that we may have done between one mass and another, we come to be rescued once again by the very person of Jesus Christ who enters into our bodies, who we take home with us to continue feeling that Jesus is indeed realistically in our lives, in, our, in each one of us who receives Holy Communion. So let's prepare the rest of this Mass until we come to the point when we receive Jesus once again. As we would say, I have benefited once more by the approach of Jesus to me. Like St. Paul was converted after Jesus Christ approached him. Glory be to the Father <clears throat> and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue with the Eucharist. <coughs>
<clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. So wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, may the gifts we bring to your altar in memory of saints Ethelburga, Hildetite and Kutburga be acceptable to you. Free us from the things that keep us from you and teach us to seek you as our only good. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of Christ. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be all always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another a sign of friendship, peace, and acceptance of each other. this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
for those who haven't received communion, I am reading this act of spiritual communion on their behalf. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if I were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And for all of us, in thanksgiving for the Holy Communion we have received, let us offer the final prayer and receive a blessing. Lord, by the power of this sacrament and the example of saints at Elburga, Hildetite, and Kutburga, guide us always in your love. May the good work you have begun in us reach perfection in the day of Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Lord bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just before I say goodbye, um, it's Wednesday. Of course, on Wednesday we do not have uh, the celebration of the Eucharist um, at the end of Mass. And instead, as you know, Wednesday is dedicated for a long period of time for cleaning the church. We clean our homes so that we can welcome guests. Can't we do this for Jesus himself? He comes to this church. He gives himself to us. And also the church is another place which sometimes needs a little bit of cleaning touch. Not a lot because it looks clean, but usually on Wednesdays we ask the congregation to just do anything that is making sort of make light hands wet where there are lots of hands working things can be done much quicker. Last week, there were only two or three people, I understand. I wasn't here. So today, I've been requested to invite you once again, perhaps if you can spare a few moments and tidy up even the benches where you are sitting and whatever. See what is needed. And in a short time, if the more the merrier, you can conclude the cleaning without much time. So God bless you all, and I hope that you will um, kind of come again. Tomorrow I'm not here, so Father, hopefully, Father Bob will continue with the Mass as usual. God bless you all, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day.